Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and this weekend is the Phyrexia All Will Be One pre-release. Whether you've been to 40 pre-releases or this is your first, it's a great place to jump in and check out the cards for the first time. And while new Phyrexia is a bit of a frightening plane to go visit, with this guide of what to expect and what to play, you'll be in great shape. Today, I'm going to show you what's inside a pre-release pack and then walk you through the color pair archetypes. Ready? Let's get started. Okay, so first and foremost, what can you expect to get when you show up to one of these things? Let me toss it over to Gavin to tell you what to expect in a pre-release pack. Take it away, Gavin. Thanks, Gavin. Here we are with a Phyrexia All Will Be One pre-release pack. We're gonna crack this thing open and see exactly what is inside of here. You see on the back, you get that incredible Elish Norn artwork on the front, a little reminder that it's pre-release. So let's crack open this strip right here. So satisfying. And what's even more satisfying is this cool Phyrexian script down here underneath. That's kind of neat. We'll pull this off here to reveal these cool little, cool, cool little windows you can punch out if you want to. Some counters on the bottom, little uh, Phyrexian symbols there. You can use them for all kinds of counters in the set, maybe. Or just, you know, decorate your house with uh, counters, just Planeswalker symbols on the other sides. But the real meat of this whole experience, of course, is going to be what's in here, the pre-release pack. When you crack this thing open, you'll get this D20. It looks so nice and Phyrexian with those good old green and black colors. And of course, in spin down, it counts all the way down, 20 to zero. So just take it like this, hold it and show that you are part of the Phyrexian army. Let's see what else we got going on here. We got this little divider. Cool, if you want to use it. We've got a pre-release card. Ooh, what I get? We have or Blaine of Bavel hold the uh, one battle cry card in the set. Go watch uh, a video I made recently talking about one of the mechanics. It's kind of cool. Uh, your pre-release card is different for everybody, but uh, you can play in your deck. So if you crack it open, you want to play Rhea Ivor, go for it. Have a lot of fun. And then on the back is a little arena code card, so that's kind of cool. And then you've got a little insert here. One side tells you about the different layers, the nine spheres of New Phyrexia, with this awesome artwork that you'll see on uh, this common artifact. It's fantastic artwork that I absolutely love talking about how the whole thing is built. Now on the back, there's some good tips for limited, you know, 15 to 18 creatures, five to eight other spells, a mana cost curve that looks like this. It looks pretty nice. But then of course, the real meat of the whole situation are these six booster packs. You're gonna crack open these six packs and use them to make a deck, 40 card deck. And you can also use lands, of course, that the store will provide you with. So what are tips should you be looking for? Let's kick it back to Gavin to tell you more. Thanks, Gavin. Okay, so now let's talk about deck building. You're going to want to play about 23 non-lands in your 40 card deck and aim for at least 14 or so creatures, if not more. But how to choose your colors? What synergies should you be on the lookout for? Well, each two color pair in Phyrexia All Will Be One has a plan. While you don't have to do it, it will definitely give you a bit of direction and something to look for as you build up your deck. Let me tell you about each of them. We'll kick things off with blue white. This one is a classic, Artifacts. This deck wants to play Artifacts turn after turn to kick off its synergy cards, like Mandible Justicar and Escaped Experiment. In general, this deck wants to tend to go pretty wide, playing a lot of creatures, so you might end up ending the game with a plated onslaught. The signpost uncommon for this deck is Cephalopod Sentry, a flyer that hits harder as you play more Artifacts. Moving on to blue-black, we've got Proliferate Control. You'll use some cheap Proliferate spells to help increase oil counters, poison counters, or even loyalty counters if you're fortunate enough to have a planeswalker join the fray. A card like Thrumming Bird can help make sure you can proliferate turn after turn and threaten a slow creep of poison on your opponents, which pairs perfectly with Voidwing Hybrid. Excellent for getting them that first poison counter and then keeps coming back time and time again. On to Red Black. It's time to get a bit oily with Oil Sacrifice. And to the surprise of nobody, Red Black is aggressive. Cards like Exuberant Fusling get bigger as your other creatures and artifacts die, and then cards like Cutthroat Centurion help you get there. And if you're able to pick up the Uncommon Char Forger, that will certainly help you get the job done. Speaking of oil, red-green is oil counters as well. Rather than sacrificing things with black, you're going big with green. Evolving Adaptive and Lattice Blade Mantis 
give you some beef. And don't forget, you can proliferate all of those up too. Cinder slash Ravager is a great payoff for having plenty of oil and will make sure to slash all of your opponent's might tokens right out of the way. Like whose might tokens? Well, White Green has them in spades with Toxic Aggro. Make some tokens through a card like Charge of the Mites or Basilica Shepherd, then amp up their toxicity with cards like Plague Nurse. Your opponent will speed toward that ever deadly 10 poison and Slaughter Singer makes them all a little bigger. If the poison doesn't get them, the damage is still plenty threatening. On to White Black, this is the Corrupted Archetype, the one that really wants your opponent to get three poison counters. While this deck can poison your opponent out, a lot of the time you just want to get through a little bit of poison to enable your Corrupted cards, like in Scissor Glider or Bone Picker Scourge. The cards that give your opponent a poison counter, like Infectious Inquiry, are especially important here, so try and pick those up too. And once your opponent is Corrupted, that turns on Vivisection Evangelist, an awesome way to pick off whatever your opponent has. More of that strange oil, it's probably nothing. Or maybe it's blue-red oil non-creature spells. Sure, non-creatures is nothing new for blue and red, but oil counters is a fun wrinkle. There are cards that get counters as you cast non-creature spells like Sawblade Scamp and Atmosphere Surgeon, and you can back those up with some nice and cheap non-creature spells. It's worth noting that if you play a proliferate spell with one of those in play, the counter will go on before the spell resolves, meaning you can proliferate it up to get a second one. Neat trick. Serum Core Chimera is the uncommon here that seals the deal, doing pretty much everything you want to do in this archetype. You know it, you love it, maybe you hate it. Well, either way, Black Green is all about poison. Do whatever it takes to get your opponent to 10 poison counters, whether with big toxic creatures like Tyranic's Atrocity and Sholadred's Head Cleaver, or just poking through the counters with Infectious Bite. Necrogen Rot Priest is your card that amps everything up a bit, helping your toxic creatures get through and deal extra toxic damage. There are a few heroes still kicking around on New Phyrexia, and you'll find them in red-white equipment. Harness the power of the four Mirrodin mechanic and cards like Blade Graft Aspirant to help out your equipment further. It might not be a hero, but it'll do the job in your deck nonetheless. Our signpost uncommon here is Blade Hold War Whip, a sweet equipment itself that helps out your other equipments. And finally, we have Blue Green Proliferate and Poison. That's right, it's not just ramp this time. If you want to sneak some poison counters on your opponent with a card like Prologue to Fire Recess and then gradually proliferate them up the rest of the way, this is the deck for you. The uncommon you want to keep an eye out for is Tainted Observer, who helps you proliferate a ton, even off of tokens you make. And there you have it, the 10 archetypes for the set. Which one are you most excited to play? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again soon. And until then, have fun preparing for your pre-release. And remember, you got this. They wanted their cards to work together. And so you might notice that with the Brothers War, we actually have changed many older cards that exactly surveil to now really surveil. And Flashback is no exception. From Quiet Speculation to Brook Coil Creeper, the literal keyword actually matters. And while in Flashback's case, 